going to examine what happens to system when one implements the caring growth model in an organization. We indicated when we examined Axiom 3 that care and growth implies an incremental suspension of control in order to enable the subordinate. And what that implies for an organization is that if you consider what the mechanisms of control are in an organization, then in the first instance the mechanisms are concerned with issues like budgets, targets, KPAs, job descriptions, hierarchies, level of authority, and these are all concerned with structure. Because if you're trying to control something, if you're trying to control a task that's being done, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to cut the task into discrete bytes, otherwise you can't control it. You have to structure it. Once you've got the discrete bytes of the task identified, the next challenge then is to string these discrete bits of work together in a system that works. So one develops procedures, processes and policies, etc. These two themes of structure and system together account for the issue of organization in the sense of organizing something which means to suggest that an organization is not a lot more than control a web of control mechanisms that one either understands through the prism of structure or through the prism of system now in the first instance when one suspends control the effect on system will be and over time an incremental shift of the character of your systems from being procedure or process driven to being more policy driven over time which suggests that increasingly people will be given a principle and are, would be allowed to manage their affairs consistently with a principle rather than being prescribed exactly what they should do what that means practically and how one establishes that practically on an incremental basis is to consider the following. We have a process called snake killing, which is really about the incremental suspension of control and, if, and how that incremental suspension of control affects system. So say, for example, we've got a, a lady in a, um, a, an IT concern. Her name is Umang and she needs a mouse. Now, in order to get this mouse, she has to go to the purchasing clerk and get a form from the purchasing clerk. That form requires her to call for suppliers, which she dutifully does. She then signs the form and sends it through to the buyer, the purchaser. Now the buyer is going to, going to want to make sure she actually did call the four suppliers. So the buyer calls the four suppliers himself. And once he signed the form, he sends the form through to Umang's boss. Now, Umang's boss wants to make sure that he's on safe ground here, so he first goes and checks with the buyer. Is the buyer sure that this purchase is okay? And then he also goes to Umang and he says, well, are you sure you really need this thing? And she says, no, I do. Look, mine's broken. So finally, the boss is convinced and he signs the form. The form then goes to the stores. The stores acquire the mouse from supplier A. Uh, and then six weeks later, Umang gets the wrong mouse. Now, this little description sounds like a parody, but tragically, it's actually very accurate for many things that happen in organizations. Now, clearly, the thought in Umang's head relating to this issue is, you know, let me just get my own mouse, please. If we allowed her to do that, that would be problematic. It would actually undermine the principle that we articulated in the third axiom. The third axiom indicates that empowerment is concerned with an incremental suspension of control. If we look at the tortured route that the task goes through, I mean, those tortured routes we call snakes. And clearly the objective of these snakes is control. If we went from the tortured route straight to what Umang really wants to do, which is to get her own mouse, that wouldn't be an incremental suspension of control. That would be an absolute suspension of control. So if one wanted to suspend a process like this incrementally, one would do the following. In the first instance, one needs to identify the snake. One needs to identify the tortured route that the task goes through before it gets done. The next thing we need to do is we need to identify the ideal. In other words, Uman gets the mouse herself. The third step we need to do is we need to identify and remove the superfluous controls. And what we mean by superfluous controls is that these are controls that add absolutely no value at all. In a sense, they are just time wasters. And there, were, there are a number of uh, control steps in the case of Umang that were clearly just a stupid waste of time. 
in any system you will find that there are a number of steps that get done that are comp that add absolutely no value at all and you can assess that they add no value at all by asking yourself if you remove this are you taking any further risk if there's absolutely no risk taken by removing the control that control is superfluous and a way of identifying whether the uh, a control is superfluous is to ask yourself whether you need to give the person who will be taking the decision any means or ability other than what they already have in order for them to be able to take that decision. If the answer to that, to that is no, then you're dealing with a superfluous control and it can be removed instantly. However, not all controls in a process have that character. Not all of them are superfluous. Some of them have, uh, have a real risk associated with them. <coughs> in terms of those remaining controls, if you were to suspend them, you have to suspend those incrementally. And in order to suspend them incrementally, you have to rank them from the control that has the smallest risk associated with it to the control that has the biggest risk associated with it. Finally, once you've identified the ranking of the controls that have risk associated with them, the next thing you need to do is you need to identify the means and the ability issues that are associated with each one of those controls. So if we were to apply the snake killing methodology to the Umang case, we would probably need a, a pro forma that would look something like the following. And the first step would require us to write down the process step by step from when she needs the mouse to when she actually gets the mouse. The second step identifying the ideal, I suppose in this case would be that she needs the mouse then she calls for suppliers and then she basically gets her own mouse. The third step would be uh, identifying and removing the superfluous controls. I should imagine that her getting a form from the purchasing clerk would be a superfluous control and the buyer calling the four suppliers would be a superfluous control if she had already called the four suppliers herself. The remaining controls that have risk associated with them, um, I should imagine the first one would be uh, that the form goes to the stores because right now the stores are, are responsible for the whole ordering and receiving side of the problem which would also then include the next step um, and then finally i suppose the the last step you'd want to take out of the process would be the buyer because we're assuming that the buyer is basically operating kind of fundamental purchasing policy in making decisions so um, we would have to ensure that umang has that that knowledge before we can allow to purchase um, the last step identifying the means and ability associated with each uh, control that has a risk associated with it so the first one was the form goes to the stores um, basically we think umang should keep some purchasing requests in her desk and she also needs the authority to order stock uh, the second uh, uh, risk that we take out as a next step that she she needs to have the authority to receive stock and be appraised of the receiving process. She needs to understand how the receiving process works. And then finally, because of the oversight role that the buyer plays, it should be the last control to be removed. In order to do so, Umang needs to be enabled in both the purchasing policy and procedure. Thank you very much.